much. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Honourable Victor Dominello, the Minister for Citizenship and Communities, and of course, Minister for Veterans Affairs, Youth and Aboriginal Affairs for being one of the co-hosts here this evening. And of course, to my very good friends uh, in the Federal Parliament, there's John Murphy, the member for Reeds. We have uh, Jason Clare, who is the Minister for Home Affairs, and of course, the member for Blacksburn, who will be with us shortly, and uh, Craig Kelly, the member for Hughes. And uh, Charles Patricelli, who's my state parliamentary colleague, the member for Strathfield. Charles, where are you? Oh, there you are. Welcome this evening as well. But also to uh, Mr. Ahmed Keskin, of course, the Executive Director and the Co-Founder of the Community Intercultural Foundation. Thank you for hosting this dinner as well and uh, your wonderful friendship over the years, of course. Uh, to Dr. Jeff McMullen AM, who is our guest speaker this evening. Welcome to you, Jeff. And to the Sheikhs, Imams and Priests and, of course, community leaders who are with us here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the New South Wales Parliament, which is the oldest parliament in the country, to the 2013 Friendship and Dialogue Iftar Dinner. I acknowledge that the theme of this year's program is Diverse Diversity, Australia's Greatest Strength. I'm honoured to represent this evening the Honourable Paul Lynch MP, who is the Shadow Attorney General and Shadow Minister for Justice, member for Liverpool, who sends his sincere apologies as well as the Honourable John Robertson, the leader of the New South Wales Labor opposition. And I do have a message from John Robertson. He has asked me to give you this particular message, and it reads, My best wishes to the Affinity Intercultural Foundation for co-hosting this event for the fifth time in its 11-year history. I also send greetings to the Muslim communities across New South Wales as you enter this important period of continent as part of your faith. The Affinity Intercultural Foundation does outstanding work promoting friendship and dialogue in Australia and across the globe. Governments can't do it all, nor can individuals acting alone. So often, it takes organisations like the Affinity Intercultural Foundation to step up and to offer the hand of friendship to all. As ever, I trust that this year's Ramadan, Ramadan observ observance will be a time of rich spiritual fulfilment and these are the words sincerely from John Robson, the leader of the New South Wales Labor Opposition. Now, I personally share the sentiments of the Honourable John Robertson. Over the past three years since my election to Parliament, I've been invited and welcomed to sit down and discuss diversity over a meal and chat with Ahmed and members of the Affinity Intercultural Foundation. Ahmed's team epitomises the true notion of an Aussie fair go. Ahmed's work to be commended in ensuring that Australians all appreciate the virtues and the wonders of Islam. I personally must confess to having had the fruits of the Affinity Intercultural Foundation's work at my fingertips. As a former two-unit studies of religion teacher prior to becoming a Member of Parliament, I frequently referred to the resources produced by the Foundation and presented them to my Catholic students. What was remarkable to me as a teacher of studies of religion was the fact that my Catholic students were able to articulate the five pillars of Islam with ease and further translate them into solid responses into the Year 11 preliminary and HSC courses. The electorate that I represent has within it 130 ethnic groups with 80 different languages spoken every single day. And as a teacher, one of the teaching strategies that I used in studies of religion was that I would employ this and I would ask my students, how do we celebrate and practice our faith? And then specifically draw links to the religion that we were studying uh, on that occasion. In essence, what students soon realise is that respect, understanding and acceptance are all important to the way that we treat one another in life. And some of the answers that students would give are as follows. That there is one God, the creator of this earth, who loves us. We are all called to prayer and reflection. Almsgiving is, an import, is important to help those less fortunate. And abstinence and fasting brings us close to God. Now, to link this to Islam was then easy, very easy to explain, especially when presenting 
the five pillars, and I'd like to go through those. Of course, the first being faith, shahada. The second, prayer, salah. Third, zakat. Fourth, zavum, which is fast. And of course, five, which is pilgrimage, the hajj. Now, if we all stop and think about our own religious and personal, personal beliefs, we only then begin to understand and appreciate the diversity of each other, and particularly here this evening. Tonight we share this specific meal together at the table, and whilst most individuals in this room are Muslim, we are all still brothers and sisters of humanity. We need more Australians to sit down and eat together when religious celebrations occur across the five major religions and other religions in this country. The Muslim community are so welcoming in sharing the breaking of the fast that other faiths must begin to offer the same gesture. So, in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I say that maybe next Easter and Christmas, my wish is that Christians will offer the same hospitality to my brothers and sisters throughout the Muslim community right here in New South Wales. Thank you all, and may God be with you during this holy time. Thank you.